Go Tiong Ku, the rickshaw puller. I think he saved my brother. Lee Kuan Yew. About 10 days after the fall, we were told to collect ourselves in certain collection centres. So they said, go there. So I said, I have left my clothes behind. I did not feel good. My eldest brother, Lee Kuan Yew, being the eldest, he was then about 18, I think. And there were gantry points. Now, the gantry points were manned by Japanese soldiers, where they get all the young males together and register them. And some of them will be sent by lorries to be executed in the Sukching. So I went back and stayed, lied low for a few days with my gardener. He had a, a laborer's quarters there, so I billeted myself with him. Second time I went out, they had changed people and they let me through. Well, I was lucky. I was lucky. Those who went on that lorry were taken to the beach and shot. Would have been me. If that Ko Tiong Ku did not help you stay on longer, and you also decide to stay on longer, the history of Singapore might have changed and he had a good laugh. <laughs> Ko Tiong Ku, he came early from the Fujian province. My mother hired Ko Tiong Ku to be the regular rickshaw puller, to send us to school and then fetch us again after school. So he was able to use his rickshaw and actually run, you know, it's amazing, such a strong man. And you know, he's so kind. He knew that we were hungry. But during tiffin time to lunch time was quite a long time. And he'll give us a quarter cent each to buy cut fruits. And that really comes from the heart. He was so kind, you know. He was that kind of a person, really fantastic. He did ask financial help as a loan so that he could open the provision shop and we always worry whether he can pay back but when the war came, he had to close his shop. But he took his share of the provisions and he gave it all to us. So that was a very useful thing. So my mother said nothing to worry about that. Kindness will always be at kindness. <laughs> So when Ko Tiong Ku fell ill, my mother would cook some food for him and I'd bring it over to KK. He recovered, luckily he recovered. He's a very strong man. But I think the food, he remembered us feeding him and to be able to send him food from cooked by my mother and send him and that I think he appreciated that a lot. But when I saw all the sick people there and the doctors working so hard, I thought that it's good to be a doctor. So when I became a doctor and I had a, went into private practice, Tionku would come once in a while to come in to say hello to me. That's interesting. Somehow my staff would know that he's very special to me. He has a special place somehow in our family. During the war years, my parents thought it'd be nice if we can rear some chickens and ducks. And he was the one, Go Tiong Ku, he'll teach me how to rear chickens and ducks and uh, grow tapioca and sweet potatoes. He was so skillful, it's amazing. So I was in charge. I was like the minister for <laughs> agriculture. <laughs> and from then on, I love gardening up to today. I will walk to my garden and do some gardening as well. 
So that was a good legacy to enjoy growing plants and vegetables and all that. My mother passed away in August of 1980. Go Tiong Ku, he was still in Singapore and he came to the wake. And when he came to the wake, he cried and knelt down. It's quite, quite, quite touching. It's amazing. He really appreciated what, uh, how we treated him, how my parents cared for him. And we appreciated what he did for us, especially during the war years. You know, he was really a great help to us. Go Tiong Ku, even as a rickshaw puller, we always treated him well. And I think he knew that. He got the feeling that he's welcome in my family. If somebody does something good to you, you must honour that person. You must return kindness back. You must honour the person again for what they have given to you. Yeah, that was a very good lesson I learned.